come and thanks. Um, unless a lot of you signed up, and I missed it. Um, just a few minutes ago. Uh, there's a lot more of you than I expected, but that's awesome. I didn't know there was a sign up. No, no, the, the thing on that. There's not a real sign up. There's just oh, the, oh, you know, access. Oh, I think I'm going to this talk and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm, this is, part of this talk is definitely the thing that you should not do. Um, and it was a live, which is a live demo. Um, and more than that, I'm going to ask you guys probably to kind of migrate up here to actually see some of what's going on. If it's too crowded, you might have to do a few phases and that kind of stuff. Um, but I started to put this talk together and show you slides and be all like, oh, look, if you did this call, this thing would happen, and here's the screenshot, and it was just all getting really stupid. Um, and so half of you are already my friends. The other half probably should be, and you know, hopefully we can all make this work and everybody can have a nice experience. Um, so I am Robert Blackwell. Um, I lied to you a little bit. This talk isn't just about your uh, putting your doorbell on the internet. Um, I'm a big fan of small things loosely coupled, um, as I'm assuming most of you are. So I'm hoping that you will see all the little building blocks of how you can do some really cool stuff and you can really over-engineer your doorbell like a real geek should. Um, so. How many people are already playing around in this space and doing something with Arduino or other embedded stuff? Yeah, Paul, yeah, okay. All right, well that's fantastic that like, only Paul raised their hand pretty much because there's a lot of really cool stuff that we can be doing with this. I was really excited, Sawyer came in, uh, early to Yapsi and sat down for several hours in the hardware hackathon and started from, I can't do this, I've never done this, what are you doing, this is crazy, to doing stuff. And it's pretty easy. Um, can I use the mic? Yeah, well, the, the people at home are going to really have a tough time because I'm going to be over there in a minute. And so if they didn't come to the app, see, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I'm not going to hold the mic while I'm typing. Sorry. Sorry from those at home. Come to the app. Come to the app. Say that into the Sorry you can't hear you from home. You should have come to the uh, I'll do the best. I'll get slides up um, and try to do something. Can I make a comment? Like, Please. If you have a webcam on your laptop, couldn't you like, put the webcam and monitor on or along with the like, uh, I'm, but you're, I feel bad, really bad for the people watching at home, but you should be here. Sorry. I'm optimizing for you guys. All right. So anyway. Um, a lot of people have been wondering, what's this Robert guy doing crazy stuff with this Arduino? Pearl's not going to run on Arduino. And, well, I never intended to do, although some interesting conversations with Patrick Michaud and others. Don't hold your breath, but who knows what might happen. But anyway, um, what I'm really interested in is Pearl obviously has been scripting systems for years with a glue language. We all know that. But I want to put us in a position to be the glue language for things. Um, and what that's going to mean is we're going to have to do some interesting things, only mildly interesting, uh, things to Arduinos and other embedded platforms. I pick on Arduino, if you're unfamiliar with this space, not because it's the only game in town, but it is an open source game. It uses, um, it's part of the open source hardware consortium, uh, which is awesome. Um, so if you don't know about that, that's going on. Um, they have a whole conference about open source hardware, which is expected to be a billion dollar market here in not too long, which is really awesome. Um, but these techniques can certainly be applied to other areas, and I hope you do apply them. Um, anyway, so I want Perl scripting things. I want doorbells and who knows what, you know, to be on the internet so we can get to them. There, this is still very much an incubation period. I don't have all the answers. I know you guys don't have all the answers, but hopefully as a collective, over time we'll come up with some cool ideas that people can use. And they'll be like, oh, I want to do this WizBake thing with stuff, and I'll just go to CPAN. And, oh, look, that module already does half of what I want, and I'll glue it together like we do for everything else, and we can apply those ideas to our Internet of Things. All right, so that said, um, I do have a few code things and so forth to show you before we get rolling. The basic setup I have here is I have the basic electronic skit that you would have when you were a teenager or younger uh, from Radio Shack. It's kind of a building block to get us started. I've got two Arduinos, both hooked up to the, uh, a little local network with a Linux server running Dancer and just my Mac being up front end of that stuff. Um, it's, it, 
might be kind of intimidating for some, I hope not for most, and believe me, with a, a little help and guidance, it really is not that hard. I mean, what, five minutes and you were blinking stuff and about another 10 minutes you're moving server motors. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. All right, so um, Arduino is programmed in C++. Um, so we can insulate ourselves from some of that, luckily. Um, where is it? I closed that. Why did I close that? Right. <coughs> so Restuino, um, while not the most amazing sketch you'll ever see in your life, lets us do some really nice stuff like Resty stuff. Um, So hopefully most of you guys are already playing with some REST interfaces and knowing what's going on. But for instance, this little service here um, is pulling my, uh, I'll actually show you the command. So I have, um, I'm using RESTy, which basically lets me register the root of my web service so that I can do interesting things like get slash A0 which A0 relates to a physical address on the Arduino. So I just say, this is all stuff that you pretty much know. While, true, do, date, get, that's kind of weird, the slash A0 maybe, and then just sleep. But it will read the value, and I will move this to the extreme um, one direction, and you'll see that it's 1,023, and I'll move it to the extreme the other way, and up it goes to Windows button. And you move the window. Oh, thank you, Mark. All right, so, oh, thank you, Jimmy. Um, so and it's defending back JSON, which is pretty handy. And we have tools, it turns out, to read JSON. So that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. So the sketch that's running on the Arduino, the rest we know, is untouched by me. I just checked it out of GitHub and put it right on there. It <coughs> is what it is, but I'm using it, and I'm getting utility out of it, and that's awesome. Um, all right. So. Um, And I don't know if people want to kind of come around yet or not, but I can say get 10 9, and I can say that it's hot. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but I want to turn it on. So I set it, and what you can't see, and it's hard to see, but a little light came on on this thing, um, which could de definitely be the proxy for your doorbell, or it could be the proxy for something to unlock a door, um, or who knows what. And I can also then do come up and go, hey, you know what, you know, I need um, number eight to be on two, and bam, I've got two LEDs on. And if I want to get their statuses, because this is kind of a restful interface, uh, ooh, why did that one, oh, yeah. Why did that one go low? I don't know if I can move the, the mode, Yeah, no, no, I get that. Uh, who knows, because it's a live demo, and you should never do one. But um, the, the effect is certainly, um, that is bizarre, of course. How are you supposed to post it? Oh, you can put it. You might. Oh, maybe it was a post. Oh, maybe yeah, your bird isn't. So when you said that little light came on, it didn't really. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the light did come on. I'm watching now. Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Keep me on. So yeah. Yeah. But on. <laughs> on. Okay. Now I can see you. And, and then, um, so the now second one on. the second one on. And, of course, and yes, nervous in front of all my friends. Um, yeah. Uh huh. Second one up. Let's go. It's going low again. That's well. Look, if you post it, you post it with nothing. No parameters. It's it's supposed to read. Yeah, it's not very oh. restful oh. after all. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure what you start posting. I'm not nervous. Anyway, anyway, I'm not You get the idea. They're coming on. <laughs> They're coming on. All right. So. But that's talking directly to the Arduino, right? So that's all fine and dandy, but I really certainly would not want to expose an Arduino um, uh, to the outside world alone. Um, I would want to put something in front of it. Um, Uh-huh. 
Um, all right, so um, in the doorbell example, so I have this setup where the little bean syrup, do I have it running? Do I have it running? So he's verified. He's checking my work. Yeah. <laughs> you press the button, the light comes on for a moment, and then it goes off. And the simplest thing that possible that works for this is this is a little dancer app. Thanks, Dario and others. Um, is this. Um, so those for you, those of you not familiar with dancer, I hope we're still able to follow along rather well. But I have a doorbell route that has a parameter of location because I have a front door and back door and each have a doorbell. So um, it's the simplest thing that will possibly work, not production code. But so I set pin nine because that's the one that we have our yeah. doorbell on. And we raise it on, we sleep for a second because we don't want to keep it ringing, and we bring it low again, and just some bogus status stuff, right? And we just use www.net to call over and do the get to set the value. And as you can see, that was working. Yep. And the interesting thing, so this is an Arduino acting as a client and another one acting as a server. Uh, so and that, you know, it is certainly over-engineered to have two Arduinos hanging out, you know, handling the doorbell. Yep. Um, but you know, once you have lots of little pieces glued together, your doorbell just becomes a part of the system as well. So um, that's kind of fun. Anyway, so then you just run this little thing. And you can even press the button if you like. Incredibly fun. Um, What's running on the Arduino when you press the button? Then? What is running on the Arduino? Thank you. Yes, that was going to tell you that. Um, so this is incredibly simple as well. Now, with Arduino Land, um, you get to set your MAC addresses. Now, a lot of changes happen with the 1.0 release, which I think it does uh, DNS better now and some other stuff. Uh, can you actually do DHCP? Um, and a few other things, I haven't, they just released it not long ago and I haven't had a chance to rock all the new things. Um, the new Ethernet shields do better with the MAC address, I believe, but before you always have to set your own MAC address, which is really great when you have two and you forget to change and you're like, what the bloody heck is going on? You, you're, you know to change the IP number, that's in your brain, but changing the MAC, who ever changes their MAC? Um, so you want to make sure that you have unique MACs. Um, Mac addresses, not Mac computers. For <laughs> um, but anyway, there are enormously great examples on the Arduino website and in their sketch examples. And this is just kind of stolen from that. Um, so you do some setup for, there's two functions on Arduino that you worry about. There's setup and there's loop. So setup is going to say things like the pin we're going to work with is going to be an input pin in contrast with an output pin. Um, we're going to do some serial logging, so we're going to set a serial speed so we can debug what's going on in the, the console. Uh, we're going to get our um, Ethernet connection. We'll delay and give it two seconds to connect, and then you can see some old dead code. And then we're going to loop forever reading the button state, and if the button state goes high, we're just going to call doorbell, um, and then we're not going to do anything. And then do, 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 do. The, big, the big, big, big exciting bit of code is down here in doorbell, um, which just says to connect to the server and blast uh, port 3000 and blast doorbell front door because I just made it hard-coded. But in theory, you would have each one test which pin. Oh, this is the front door. This is the back door. Call doorbell with front, call doorbell with back, and you can have different actions doing whatever you want. I mean, whatever you want. Text me, do, you know, do all kinds of crazy stuff, which is, is to me, it's really, it's not that much here. I mean, despite some weird stuff that maybe didn't work when I was just trying to show it, but it's really not that crazy, and it's pretty accessible for us all. Um, and I'm hoping I get some other people writing some really cool stuff and doing some really fun stuff. Um, so you can press it again, other people can press it. <laughs> um, and that's, so 
basically what that's doing is it's going through this one, going out, coming back to this one, and turning back on. Okay. Um, and I just find this to be incredibly cool, and we can do more stuff. Um, if you want to turn the knob, you can actually see that it will change. Okay. So bar pot, yep. Anybody have any kind of questions? We want to actually come up and do some of this more. Um, I was kind of expecting to have a little more interaction. <laughs> Not anyone but Mike or Alex. So this is the device actually? There's actually two. Okay, I'll let you do that. So okay. Arduinos are um, a microcontrolling platform. What we've stacked on top are Ethernet shields. Shields are expansion boards. Okay. There's a really cool website called Shield Lift that will, tr it, it tries to bring all the shields together, let you know what's there. And the kind of painful part is once you start to stack shields, um, you have to be careful because some pins, uh, some shields eat pins as they move up the stack, depending on what they're doing. So you know, maybe one eats two I.O. pins, so it steals digital one and digital two. And then, oh, but so does this guy's shield. Well, it's not generally a problem because they're constants and you can go in and change them, but you just need to know that just stacking a bunch of shields up will take some. You can't go for it. Well, you can go for a long way, whatever. There's always fine at home. Um, you know, but it's, uh, it, 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 the, the community's doing, uh, the Arduino community's doing a nice job. Um, you know, trying to put stuff together. Obviously, as you you need to have communication going between the Ethernet shield and the Arduino before, so it's going to eat some of the pins. Okay. Okay. So, and that's what uh, a website called Shield List does a really nice job of illustrating how what pins are going to be used. So, you know, let me just talk an Ethernet shield as an example. I take it there's probably a wireless shield. There, there's wireless shields. There's all kinds of shields. There's even a drink shield, which you know we in the Perl community absolutely use. Because we should tie it to um, your blood alcohol level and find out what everyone in the Pearl community's optimal bomb or peak is and not let you commit to CPAN <laughs> until your bomb or peak is perfect. And since we have CPAN testers, you know, we can kind of work through and figure out what that is. It'll be a little bootstrap. Nice. I have not. Yeah. Please talk. Yeah. Okay, so if you could, for the Two or three people who don't know who Paul is, he oh. is also really deep into this stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> and way wider than that. So, just a very, very quick jump, though. Um, where, am I, where am I standing? Over here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I just a very quick jump, though. Something by reading from the piezoelectric 
rather than writing to them, and you go, oh, oh, I, I spotted a, a bump then. And so you have one of these things, and you, you know, whack it against the table or something, and it does something, it doesn't break. So, yeah, they actually have to be quite small and uh, very, very cool. So what's the name of this? Uh, this is called a Leo stick. Leo stick. Um, I believe that there is a, an actual, there's a design for the Arduino called the, I think it's called the Leonardo, which yes. is similar. Yeah, this is effectively um, the backstory of this. Are we recording this? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think you're supposed to talk about yeah, it. My, my understanding of the recording, uh, my understanding of the backstory with these um, is that some very clever people saw pictures of the uh, Leonardo boards and said, oh, I think that we can reverse engineer those and effectively came up with this. And, uh, and it does actually work really, really well. So um, these are about as small as you can get. Um, and they're great if you want to put them in clothes. You can also get some, what are they called? Lily pads? Lily pads. Yeah, which are washable, I believe notice. Um, and they come with a whole accessory kit. So you can actually get... Um, both companies called SparkFun and Adafruit sell these types of things. Uh, Maker Shed from O'Reilly is another. There's several others. Those are kind of the big three. Um, they do a great job of sourcing stuff for us. Um, there's, a, you know, certainly in the move in the current electronics is to move everything to surface mount and put them in little black boxes that are really hard for us to use. And what companies like SparkFun and Adafruit are doing are uh, they are going through and making it accessible to everyone with breakout boards and tutorials and examples and it's really exciting stuff. Um, Lady A is the one who put the Connect Bounty app to open source uh, a driver for um, Connect when it came out this year, not too many years ago. But uh, when you were talking about the Lily pads, there's, they'll sell conductive thread, they'll sell LEDs, they'll sell um, little buzzers that are all, you know, Washable at some level. I mean, you know, we are talking about electronics here, but it is really cool. I mean, I've seen people. Uh, one of the kind of cooler projects I saw that was wearable, besides Paul's, um, uh, but it was from a technical thing. Was an inbox zero pin. So, <laughs> so um, they had basically uh, how many messages are in their inbox um, listed, and when they were not at inbox zero, they had, I think they had the prohibition symbol going somehow, and they were not. Come up, which was really kind of cool. Have you seen that one? No, but I was going to say I've seen some other interesting, like Arduino based clothing stuff at Mini Maker Hair in Vancouver last year. There was uh -huh. a group that had, I think the, most, the coolest thing was that they made the skirt with LEDs and like motion sensors. So you moved and they would, the LEDs on the skirt would change colors and stuff. And it was really trippy and awesome. Yes. Um, not really an Arduino project, but one of the ones I also like are the soft circuits where people use conductive yarn and conductive thread to make pause and play and fast forward, etc. buttons for their iPods or whatever their tool is. And so they're just they're nice little soft circuits. Yeah, kind of cool. do that also to make um, touchscreens. I'm a knitter as well, so people buy that to make little uh, gloves that you can keep on and still use capacitors for knitting. And oh, yeah. Stuff. Shipping about uh, domestically US, they're expecting them about a billion, no, a billion serial ports to ship. Um, RS-232, not just these, uh, in the next three years. So that's an enormous amount of things that we could talk to, I would suspect, and glue together. Um, some of you probably have heard my example of when I was doing some hardware testing, I just scripted a power supply cycle. It was a remarkably easy project just to hit a button, have it open a relay. Um, which powered down the device I was testing, waited five seconds, 
and it brought it back up. Oh. That was kind of handy and cool. So, um, coming in this night, what kind of crisis are you talking about for the various pieces of gear? So, I, I, so Freetronics, the Paul was talking about sells a lot of knockoff stuff. I can't give you the exact pricing. So it's a little cheaper, but Arduinos, which these are the main brand Arduinos that I'm using, mm -hmm. um, I can get from source from SparkFun, which is usually where I buy those from, mm -hmm. for about 30 bucks a piece. Okay. The real crappy part is the Ethernet shield right now is about 40 bucks. <laughs> and let's face it, if it doesn't get on the internet and doesn't speak JSON, then it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that, I mean, 70 bucks is still not a lot of money, but it is a little important. There are shields out there that are um, integrating the two shields together into one board. Um, Hobbs had one of the hackathon that he's using for his time. He, he's made an MTP server mm -hmm. with an Arduino and a GPS receiver mm -hmm. for his video center. Okay, so for, let's say, a, a Raspberry Pi is what? So yeah, something in that order. Yeah, but that's a full embedded Linux machine, which is cool, mm -hmm. and it has a lot more um, capabilities at some level, but it doesn't quite have the accessibility to the I/O. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case, I could see some really cool, and I hope to have a Raspberry Pi here, but I was in the second round of orders and we didn't get here. Um, but it's got to definitely have USB ports on. Oh yeah, you could definitely so have a Raspberry Pi talking to an Arduino. So you. If you could get a Raspberry Pi instead and be talking that way, absolutely. The other thing people are doing is they're using um, old Linksys routers, I see this pretty common, or uh, any other kind of like 802.11b router. As it turns out, many of them, if you crack them open, have serial inside, mm -hmm. they just never pull them out. And so you just go in, solder three wires together, now you have serial, and you run it out to your Arduino, and now you've got access. And you're running a little Linux distro there on the, on the uh, router. So it's not quite like the Raspberry Pi, but you know, you've got some connectors and some stuff. But all, all low voltage, I mean, fairly low voltage stuff, so that's cool and pretty powerful. And, and the Arduinos are they're pretty resistant to you doing bad things to them as well, which is nice. Because um, I certainly, my old eyes are like, oh, that's not the right pin. Um, I don't know this time. So um, who's got cool projects they want to talk about? or? Oh, this is a great story. So um, there's Google um, I.O. And was it last two I.O.s ago, Paul? Do you know the story? I haven't been to a Google I.O. So. Well, they, neither have I. But I, I know some of the things that happened. Um, but a Google I.O., I think it was two years ago, um, they released the Android Arduino dev kit. So up until that point, Arduino had sold, I'm told, about 350,000 units in the years before, in the months after they sold hundreds of thousands of units. Um, so just a little power of Google there. But now they're in all uh, 3,000 US radio shacks. Stocks, um, um, Ethernet shields. they stock Ethernet shields. They generally have Arduino Unos, they have Megas, and they have um, a few other shields, like a little breakout shield. Which is all, I mean, it's, it's very cool that it's being so accessible. Um, which is, you know, kind of why I'm evangelizing this stuff to the community because it's becoming popular and the way I kind of see it is if we, are, if we already load up TPAN and we load the community up with ideas and stuff, then that's going to be a good thing and people are like, oh, I have the great new whiz bang thing I want to do and it's like a few TPAN modules away and the dreams are reality. Um, good news it's really good stuff. I'm still spitballing, but for ex one example, I was just talking to um, uh, Mike Schilly. Is it, where is Mike? Yeah. Like he was re mentioning that whichever multimeter you made a module for that is up on CPAN. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we were kind of spitballing, or I was at least spitballing his way, is, you know, if we had, you know, I don't know, device multimeter that would then, you know, have a higher abstraction of what you do with a multimeter, and of course, you know, if we 
class it correctly, then some multimeters have more functions than others, but there's a base amount of features that a multimeter has. Hey, what's the voltage that's on my meter? Pretty basic. Um, and they all speak serial, so you know, it would be rather easy for us to have a catalog of you know, a bunch of multimeters, which is a, something, a very common thing in a lab, to read multimeters and log them and find out what's going on. And you know, from there, it's not too far from building a really cool dancer app that could aggregate a whole bunch of multimeters for you in a lab and see what they're all doing, and then build, oh, I don't know, an any event system that fires off certain events if there's certain amounts of drift between the different multimeters and all, I mean, there's, like it becomes really cool, I mean, of, of where we could go. I saw a hand. Yes. So you're running this in your house, right? Well, unfortunately, I took it apart to bring part of the parts here. But generally speaking, it is. Okay, so I guess my question is, yeah. is the thing that we went up there and looked at, is that the Arduino? Yes. The, the, the little board here. Um, the, one, the one that says, like, National Electronics Lab? Or no? This black thing. Oh, no. That's, okay, good. Okay. Good question. I was going to say so. No. <laughs> and this is why I'm here. So, okay. So the Arduino board itself is... Just this board under here, that little thing. Okay. And I have a case that sits over this. Okay. And it sits in my basement. Okay. Um, and what the current system does, before I knew about Rustwino and stuff like that, but what the current system does is you hit the button, it acknowledges the doorbell is there, it calls to my <coughs> sponsor Linode um, <laughs> account. Um, which just does a very simple, stupid, you know, send me an email using the SMS to email gateway. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not sending directly the mail from my Arduino, which there are libraries you can actually do that. But, you know, what I'm really more interested in is bringing all this kind of stuff together and almost treating it as all these devices and all these machines as one thing. You know, not, oh, this is this bunch of stuff. It's the computer and it's got a you know, monitor and a keyboard connected to it. That's one thing. And oh, over here, this is another thing. Like, no, they're all so, so there's separate. No computer. I mean, you the computer Arduino is the micro, so it's, it's microcontroller, which is basically a computer. And you just have it hooked into your network? Yep. Yeah. Just plug right into my network at home. Sorry to ask in your face, Jack. No. All right. <laughs> that's what, did you miss the part where I said, come up? I mean, this, this, is, this is meant to kind of get you know, interactive and get questions answered. Do you have a doorbell? Do you have cables that run down to a basement? So uh, I do have big cables that run in my basement, but they were already running there because I already had a previously existing doorbell. So uh, I, just, I just went down to the basement into, into a reasonable spot and spliced into the doorbell cable. And then I have, there's a relay also actually that's connected to it. Mm -hmm. So the existing bell still continues to work. Uh, um, yes, well, <laughs> or not. Um, it needs some features though. It needs some features like, I'm taking a nap, leave me alone, don't let the bells ring in this time. You can easily do that. I mean, you can, I mean, it's just it's not implemented yet. Set the dancer out, like an interface. Oh. You can configure the sleep time schedule or just the sleep button. Yeah. Like no. And, and using, so I taught a class at Ohio Linux Fest um, that was, I thought, pretty cool. But we used the rest we know to control a servo motor. And if you're not familiar with um, a servo motor, it's one of these. But they come in many shapes and sizes. Um, and is I have a witness. It takes about 15 minutes to use the sketch and wire it up on an Arduino to use their sample application oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to start moving this. Oh, that was really cool. And so you could take, and one of the example sketches they give you is using a potentiometer, so the thing I had scrolling by that you were nice enough to change the value of. So as you would change the value here, which this is scaled from um, zero to 1,000, Three, these move in degrees from zero to 179. Well, there's a really cool function called map, um, but it's not a scroll map. Um, it's a map that takes a range of numbers over another range of numbers and basically makes the strings equal and figures out how close strings should be in the middle. So it becomes really easy. Um, so anyway, I removed the potentiometer from that, added rest we know. Um, and use jQuery Mobile with Slider. Uh, if you haven't used uh, a lot of jQuery Mobile, it's jQuery on steroids for mobile devices. But I was then able to t go and just run the slider like this and tell the motor where to go. 
from anywhere that has Wi-Fi and it's on the internet and etc. And I'm sorry, that's just really cool. Um, and it took from the time I conceptualized it to actually making it happen, at least in its first state, was about an hour. Um, you know, I just find that to be pretty darn incredible that we can do that kind of stuff so quickly. And I'm not an EE. I am not. I mean, I'm a geek, yeah, but I mean, this stuff is pretty accessible. You know, I'm I'm an excited and I'm an excited evangelist. That's the kind of EE I guess I am. So. Has anyone noticed the air conditioning baffling? I would suspect, right? So one of the cool projects I saw is a guy set up um, OpenCV, and he looked for the train coming. And when the train came, he had a linear actuator close the window to his house because the train is so loud. And then when the train goes away, it opens the window. I mean, and it's, it's very accessible stuff. Yes? So I have a Yes. I would love to replace them with, say, uh, a mobile web interface. Yeah. So I need some way of generating IOPS. So, what do you recommend? yep. Okay. So, um, thank you because I, I did not mean to lie in this off. Um, uh, or the description. Where did it go? Oh, oh huh. I guess I saw this. I write what others have done better than I could do. So, especially since, you know, Lady A is like, you know, MIT, doctorate, foo, woman, I mean, great story line. Um, this, is, this is what I was going to put together, and it's unfortunately kind of fell through. Um, but you can use the Arduinos. Her example that she goes into is creating uh, for a camera to take uh, pictures using it. But it's a, few, it's a few dollars to buy one of the components. Um, the trick is you have to, you know, read, and she goes through this, on how you read the signals um, to know what your remotes are currently doing. Yeah. So you capture that, yep. and then you have the transmitters send them back out. Um, in my home, you know, I, I have uh, um, an IR repeater. So I put all of my junk in the closet with the little receiver. I don't know if you've seen those. Um, right under my TV, because my wife hates to see all the wires. Um, so that you get to see different wires. Um, but, so that's really cool too, because then you can hide everything, and you can, if you're using a phone, you could hide probably even more. So anyway, her sketch is, um, it, it, it's non-trivial. I mean, it, it, but it's, it's doable. And it's, and it's well documented. It's very well documented. So, thanks, Sean. If it's anything that somebody else in the country likely has, That is true. The oscilloscope to go through that. Yeah. Yeah, some of the standard stuff is already pretty well documented. Um, and there's um, there's a company called Red Eye. I actually tried to have them try to come to PCW uh, one year, but they didn't understand why that would make sense for them. Um, but they make a device that is a little Linux <coughs> box, and it can rebroadcast infrared, and then they have a remote control that works over Wi-Fi or through some app. So I'm like, how awesome would that be to have a Perl interface to the red eye thing that like, hey, you already know all this stuff, and you've already got the nice GUI, and you already understand all the code. You have the code database already. Um, I don't have to teach anything, anything. It's a few hundred bucks. It's not completely cheap, but it's, you know, reasonable. It's reasonable. So, yeah. You got a ping. Oh, you got a ping set up. You want to show it? Do you want to introduce yourself and show it off? So we've been having the hardware hackathon. He was soldering away quite a bit earlier today. I got together three, I got two mesh shields, a joystick shield, and a bunch of things. That's what the plan is to get this working. <laughs> so just to, just to be clear, we soldered it all together and he got it working today. So uh, basically, you probably want to explain what the ping shield, shield is though. Centimeters up to 10 feet, a lot of breaks mixed up here. Uh, 
two inch material. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we'll stick with the same suit. Um, but basically, depending on how close you are, it'll flash that light faster. Not sure it should. something to help you stop hitting the garbage cans in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> because you should use SMS when you're about to hit a wall. <laughs> I'm going to use LEDs. I'm teasing. <laughs> or at least your insurance <laughs> agent should get no. it. That's got to be something. In there. <laughs> but, I mean, but it's not tied to one thing, right? I mean, you can make it. It's just a message, right? You're getting close to the wall. Oh, turn the LED on and, I don't know, do other stuff. Turn the lights off. I mean, it's all kinds of fun. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to put like a, try to make an LED bar graph. How close you're getting. Yeah. Green lights while you're still far away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Increasing red lights. So, what other questions do you have? Because I want all you guys to be able to probably wear the hardware hacker um, either you're going to be one or you feel like you already are one, you know, badge, because we got too many. <laughs> <laughs> we got a community hat. Come on. It's exciting stuff. It's so accessible. I mean, especially with this kind of stuff. Is there any shields that have the wireless on them? There are. They're, they're rather expensive. Um, I, I wish I could give you an exact price, but they're, they're definitely there. But it might be more cost effective not to use that. Well, it depends on your, it depends on your use case. What, what's really funny is you get into discussions with hardcore electrical engineer people but you go, but you can do all that with a $4 chip that does the thing with the stuff. And you're like, yeah, but we got it going in three minutes. Okay. And you're talking a delta of $25? I mean, I just don't, I mean, if I was making a production run of something, we can start to entertain that, okay, that's not quite right. But if it's this little project around the house, it's pretty cheap. And there's, the, I have the pigtails actually with me, Mark, where they have pigtails that let you do um, the power over Ethernet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, and vice versa, versa you, you can do you can do Ethernet over power. So yes. You can, right. you get the, so you're running them both from the main unit. Yeah. So you know, there, there's so much stuff out there now. Um, you know, it's kind of like if you kind of dream it. There's probably a CPAN module that does close to what you want, unless you're just too far from the edge. Um, but it's kind of the same space in Arduino one these days. So if you can dream it, there's probably a hack for it already or a sketch or a shield. I mean, it's getting pretty good. It's really amazing. Um, but it's still kind of quiet. I mean, it's still not hit the critical mass. I mean, obviously, Paul's at, what do you say, Linux, uh, Linux, uh, Linux, Linux on the Linux on the everybody in the show X, but a little DOC. So that's a pretty big deal. I do have a talk, um, and then we're, so I have a repo now called Pro Hardware, which I'll shove some notes about this discussion, and I've got some previous talks, so I'll polish a little bit and put notes up and make them into blog posts or something. But I was giving an example of how you can take the LED blink sketch, the very basic sketch from the Arduino library uh, uh, documentation, and make it blink. 
I gave three examples. I showed one yeah. using just standard serial, um, using one over HTTP, and one using what's called Vermada, which is a um, standard way of making microcontrollers talk. You basically put a protocol on your microcontroller. Um, and then you can run apps that are already pre-built that know how to speak for mod and you just say, oh, I want that pin to go high, and it just goes high. And I want that pin to go low, which I think would be a great way, a, a nice dancer app. I mean, not that we'd have to modify dancer, but I think it'd be a nice. Um, the guy that wrote device for mod doesn't have it on CCAM now. Last look, it's just out there running wild. What's that? But, uh, you know, hopefully we can get that on CCAM or something, have a nice little thing where it you can just launch a dancer app and you've got a Fermata interface into your microcontroller. Um, what that does mean, though, is you would have to download the Fermata sketch onto the Arduino. Um, and for like, my Blink sketch, I mean, I just hacked together some pretty quick stuff, but I think some thought can be given into what is the Restuino? Okay, maybe Restuino will be the answer for us for an HTTP interface, at least a generic one. And then the same thing can be done for serial, and we can have a little serial protocol that knows how to do most of the stuff. So then you're kind of insulated. You're just gonna bump that thing onto your Arduino and go off back to Pearl Land and start playing. So that's pretty cool. And certainly some things are gonna be better optimized in the Arduino than in Pearl or vice versa. But you can begin to play. The little sampling thing, for instance, uh, when I'm a modification that I think this should be doing, because what this is doing is going and pulling over Arduino asking what analog zero is set to, what really that probably should be doing is the Arduino should be logging what's going on and then in the time that I have an app. And I would get an array of values back and it would just dump the results to me when I ask and then start over. But, you know, but we, we, you know, you need to figure out what's gonna be familiar, what's expected, so you don't have to think so hard when you're in these spaces. But it's really exciting, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've gotten a lot of nice people that are kind of excited about the cross community already, you know. So whether you've got something to contribute or you're anxious for us to get CPAN full of fun stuff that you can start using, either way, that's great. You know, hopefully you, you hopefully you'll put some, you'll stuff CPAN full, or if not, you'll be using it soon. Anybody else? Come on, none of you raised your hands that you're already playing with Arduino, so I know you have questions. You can come by the hackathon. Um, I'll, I'll be there tomorrow as well. So if you just want to come by and see how easy it is to get some sketches loaded, um, the IDE does a great job. Eventually, you will cut it, um, and I do, but I haven't gone and dealt with the make file stuff yet. Um, but you can actually co code all this stuff in your favorite editor, and there's make files for it, and it can push it over, and it's all good. So don't don't be afraid of the IDE. You don't have to stay there forever. But I would definitely advise starting there. Come on, guys. Okay, SparkFun is awesome. Um, SparkFun, um, Lady and you both have neat uh, posts that come out all the time. Um, so a couple other things. Um, you know the Wii Nunchuck? So you gamers out there, um, those have great components. I have breakout boards for those. So I have those here, Paul. You know. Really? Yes, I have, I don't know, six, no, I have like ten of them here, uh, with breakout boards. You disassemble the nunchuck. Don't disassemble them, my god, man. <laughs> um, you just plug straight in. You get, so it's a breakout board yep. with a pin. Yep. And you just, you don't have to cut the end off the connector. I mean, you can cut and hack one and do whatever. Right. But it, it's an I-squared I square, I square E bus. You just plug right up, Absolutely. and there's libraries for it, and cool. off you go. Um, the reference, I would say, the kind of reference example of this is doing Thank you.
smart and getting smarter. Um, but anyway, uh, they made a video game shield. So you can take two weak shots, and they've got the board set up where it does the lock in. So lock in, for no knows what you're lock in, and they're referencing Tetris. Mm -hmm. And so you get to go back and play Tetris because it's actually video out to a display. So you can go out to a CRT. Um, and you can play this thing, which is really cool. And it doesn't eat all the pins. Yes! That's fantastic. Yes, it is! <laughs> and um, one of the projects I had uh, that I wanted to do with, with the kids is I was lucky enough to go to Ready Check when they were clearancing their Simons. Mm -hmm. And so I've got all the, I, I must have like 30 Simon games now. And I want to basically re implement Simons, but break it out and keep the interface clean as possible. Mm -hmm. And just come out with like one wire or whatever to kind of go off. But then you could play over, you know, you can play Simon over a REST interface with someone else and you do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, it's, it's all accessible and fun. The Tetris thing I want to do is that the ZD stuff is kind of kicking my butt, quite frankly, but I'll figure it out. But, uh, but I have a bowling ball with old broomstick stuck in it with an accelerometer on the end of it with the ZD shield. It's, they kind of talk, but I'm having trouble. But I'll figure it out. You know the broomsticks don't slide very well to put a bowling ball on them. They don't, <laughs> which is perfect for this application. Because I want the stick to be able to kind of free float in my hand, and then I put a button on top. So when I want to move the bricks, I move it this way. And the accelerometer knows where it went, and it knows how fast I went. And I want to talk to the video game shield to say, oh, it went there and it went this fast, so it moves the brick faster. And go this way, and there's a button on top, so it drops the brick. So, cool. no, it's not practical, but it's fun. <laughs> so, and it's, I mean, it's still accessible, even though I'm struggling a little bit. But, you know, it's not like I spent weeks in failing. I mean, it's just been, yeah. One of my neighbors used to be on the radio, so he knows all of our radio talent in Pittsburgh. So they went through and recorded our Halloween house tour story. Uh, because it turns out when you're doing neighborhood tours, it's a lot easier to find people to lead people from house to house and press a button than it is to find people to lead them house to house, press a button, or excuse me, to not press a button and tell a spooky story. So we replaced tell a spooky story with press the button. Um, so there's a wave shield. Um, there's also uh, an MP3 shield, but um, they were out of stock when I started this project, so I had to go with the wave. But you just have a wave file on the or wave files even, but my application is just one. Um, I have a wave file on an SD card, my spooky story with the mixed in sound effects. And the person walks up, I just went to Walmart and bought a bunch of wireless doorbells, ripped off the piezo, wired it into the Arduino. When the signal goes high enough, I go, oh, okay, play. And it plays the wave file. Um, and we, so we rent amps for the day, and we scatter them out to the neighborhood, and door guys come up, and ooh, spooky stuff happens. Now, the, the level I haven't gotten to, um, because it turns out um, there's a little event I do right around then, too, called PPW, which sucks all my time. Um, and now I'm doing Maker Fair Pittsburgh. I organize that, so it sucks a lot of time. But... Um, I haven't gotten to the point where what I really want to have happen is when you get to specific parts in the stories that events can happen. I mean, for instance, one of our stories talks about the light coming on in the balcony. Well, the light should come on on the balcony when that happens. Um, we cheat now. We have neighborhood kids. But, it, but we can totally script that in a way that when you get to this play part in the wave file, then turn the light on. It's, it's cool. Could you replace the button with a motion sensor? Absolutely. That's awesome. But um, I, I want the specific. I mean, I don't want the car setting it off, and I don't want the trouble of trying to tune what motion and exactly what spot. Um, I don't want the cat setting it off. And the neighbors are the neighbors that aren't in the club. Um, they get a little annoyed after two days of <laughs> blasting through the neighborhood. 
uh, we do try to limit the number of plays. Uh, who's got that number? What's that? You can leave any time. Uh, the doors are not locked. No, you're going to get gone. Well, that's fine too. But, uh, anyway, thank you guys so much. I know this was very informal, but I hope you gained something. I hope you got all excited. I hope you go stick something really cool in the pan. Um, and if you don't put it there, send it to somebody. Hopefully, we'll figure out some kind of pearl mailing list or something. If only, if they hand in the house. You know, if only we could get a mailing list for this kind of stuff or something. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe we'll end up with a PM mailing list of some kind. Um, yeah.